Hello everybody and welcome back to Olive Boy Pens. Today I am very excited to bring you my coverage of the San Francisco Pen Show of 2022. This is uh, the first pen show I've been to since 2019, since before all of the things in the world. And the SF Pen Show is kind of the only pen show I've been to, but I've been going since 2017 um, when I first got into fountain pens. And I love it. I think it's a really fun environment. Um, I obviously had a, a lot of pen friends in the Bay Area, so I was really excited to see everyone. Because it had been so long since I had gone to a pen show, I came with a very clear plan, which I normally don't do. I just kind of go and kind of have fun. So uh, the weeks leading up to the show, I uh, listed a bunch of my own pens for sale um, for either, you know, just shipping from Europe or uh, shipping from California or show pickup. Um, just so I would have uh, a little bit more budget to throw around at the show um, without, you know, dipping into my actual non-pen fund, if that makes sense. So that was pretty successful. Um, I, I had a good amount of money going in and I had some pens I was looking for, as well as some things I wanted to trade. So I arrived at the pen show and uh, was immediately overwhelmed because I hadn't been around so many pen people or frankly, I don't even know if like just people in, in a really long time, um, immediately started seeing old friends um, and it was super fun. So I'll, I'll play some little clips of just cool stuff I saw before I get into kind of the pens that I picked up for myself. This pen right here is a uh, Lamy Dialogue 3 in the Arushi finish. Um, they did a limited edition a while ago and then these are kind of new regular editions, um, if you can call them that. They are $8,000. But I was very happy to be able to play with one uh, because I've always wanted to see one. And yeah, this was dope. Uh, this is another super cool Mont Blanc Bohème, uh, which I mentioned, you know, there's a lot of different finishes of them. And uh, it was cool to see so many. I definitely saw a lot more than just this one, but this one with the super cool amethyst and all the different designs on it was very exciting. This is the uh, Bungu Box new Fujiyama Blue uh, Custom 823. So this is based on a Pilot Custom A23, but redone in all these fancy colors. Uh, this is actually, I saw this before it came out officially, but um, of course it sold ridiculously fast before anyone could get, a, get their hands on one at the show for sure. So the first thing I did when I arrived at the show is I made a beeline to my friend Mike's table. Um, we had arranged a trade beforehand and also for me to drop off some pens at his table to potentially sell, um, which went really well. Um, so the first thing I picked up at the show was this Sailor Pro Gear Apriski, which is something I've had my eyes on for a minute. I traded it for a uh, Wall Eversharp Deco Band that uh, I just wasn't using and is of kind of equivalent value. So yeah, let's take a closer look at that Apriski. So the Sailor Pro Gear Apriski is part of their cocktail series, which had 10 pens over 10 years, which is kind of cool. Um, and the Apriski is one of the ones that is most popular. Uh, it is a lovely jade green. You can even see the nib through there with the transparency uh, with little clear ice cube finials, which I think is super cute, as well as the cherry on top, which I think is quite cute. Uh, I never felt like spending money on one of these, to be absolutely frank with you. Um, they were, I think, 275 retail when they came out in like 2014, I want to say. Um, and then they quickly ballooned up to like 400 on the resale market just because they're the one of the most popular ones. So when Mike offered me to trade for one uh, for my wall deco band that I frankly just never used and never really even took outside, I jumped on it. So this one has a medium two-tone 21 karat gold nib that is gorgeous. And uh, yeah, I inked it with uh, some... Uh, pen point rain frog riallo ink, uh, which I still have even though I sold the pen 
This is the sailor Afriski in medium. It's a rain frog. Uh, medium is, I think, as previously stated, one of my least favorite sizes of nibs. But I never mind a sailor nib. They're always smooth with a little bit of feedback, um, solid ink flow. This is just like a very everyday use type of nib. You could write for pages and pages, no problem. Um, I might swap it out to have my Naginata Togi, depending on how I'm feeling. But uh, for now, I'm very happy with this pen. Afterwards, I went looking for more tables looking to buy, sell, and trade. I was trying to uh, get rid of a couple of pens that I wasn't using so much, namely my Pelican M600 in Vibrant Orange. Um, and I found someone who had some cool pens at their table um, of, you know, kind of equivalent value that I had had my eyes on before. And uh, that is how I ended up with this uh, Graf von Faber-Castell Classic with a lovely 18 karat broad nib. Um, it's in definitely used condition, but, you know, considering the prices I've seen these go for new, um, I was very happy to make the trade and it is a very cool pen. So the Graf von Faber-Castell Classic is a pen that I have been kind of haunted by just because I always see it in department stores in France and I'm always like, damn, that's a real nice pen and I will never buy it because it's 500 euros. So I was really happy to find one in a way that I would not have to spend 500 euros on it in that it is used. Uh, and also I traded it for a Pelican um, that I paid a lot less than 500 bucks for. Anyway. Um, it's not in amazing shape. The cap's a little dinged up and a little tarnished. Um, the wood is in great shape, though. And then the nib on it was a just very blobby uh, broad. So in the interim period, I've ground it down to a stub. Um, as I'll mention later, um, I got some great grinding tips from CY as he was working. Uh, so, uh, you know, this stub is a lot better than ones I've ground before. Um, so... Uh, the grip on this one is just okay. Um, it's kind of slippery and a little bit thin, but the nib is really nice now. And, uh, you know, it's just a kind of cartridge filler, uh, cartridge converter filler, very classic looking. Um, so let's do some quick writing with it. The Graf von Faber Castell Classic. Uh, broad stub and this is Maruzin Athena Eternal Blue which I'm abbreviating here because that's a long ass name uh, the nib is nice and bouncy it's 18 karat gold um, and given that I had such a nice broad nib to start with I decided a stub would be quite appropriate and allows for some nice classic stub line variation and makes cursive as well as block letters look very nice. I'm going to be using this pen a lot. I think probably more than my uh, old intuition that I sold as part of this big pen sell off just because the cap seal was so bad on this one and this one seems to be okay. Afterwards I went on a hunt. I was looking for a specific pen at this pen show which was an Aurora Optima. After trying out a lot of different friends Aurora Optimas over the years I was like all right it's time to get one. And yeah, so I looked around at a lot of different tables. I saw some really cool ones with like fancy, you know, metal caps and a bunch of different colors. Um, but a lot of them were either new or like so crazy limited edition that they were out of my budget. Um, and that is when I got a text from uh, my friend Mike that he had some money for me. Some of my pens had sold. Um, so I was expecting, you know, one of my kind of $150 pens had sold. So I, okay, maybe I can stretch my budget a little bit. But no, uh, two pens had sold, one for 150, one for 250. So suddenly my pen show budget kind of just doubled. Um, and I was super excited to look around, just like, oh my God, maybe I'm gonna get a fancy Optima. Um, but actually I found one for 350 bucks, which is obviously a lot, but you know, that's, we're talking in different degrees of insanity here. Um, and I found actually a really cool version of the Optima, which is the Optima Soleil, which is this lovely orange with a little sun on it. Um, definitely used for sure. It has some marks of age, um, but 
it's very cool and I'm excited to show you guys so the pen that I was actually looking for uh, the Aurora Optima and this one is the special edition Soleil which I believe was limited to 5,000 this is number 4,718 um, so not a huge limited edition run but not that small either um, it's got a fun sun at the top of the clip. Uh, the clip has a good bit of tarnish and uh, the cap has kind of a big scratch on the back, but it's kind of hard to tell with this material, which is very similar to the material of the Pelican that I no longer have. Uh, but I think it looks nice around this pen. Optimas have a really nice proportion to them. I love the detailing on this band. Um, and I think they look really good with the cap off as well. Um, I love black and orange as a color scheme as well as with the gold trim. I think it looks really nice. Um, and then this ink window is very classy and allows me to see how clean my pen is. Uh, this one has uh, one of the inks that I purchased at the show, which I will mention very shortly. Um, but it's uh, J. Urban uh, Ombre de Baltique, um, which I think is like, I was looking for an ink to match this pen and I think I did a pretty good job. So this is the Aurora Optima Soleil in a medium with a Ombre Baltique. Uh, this nib, right when I bought it, uh, was not good. Uh, I've always heard Aurora nibs were feedbacky, but this one was super dry too, so it was just generally unpleasant. Um, so, in some little extra time at CY's table, I had him uh, just touch it up a little bit, and now it writes, I think, as intended, which is very well. Uh, 18 karat gold nib, not bouncy at all. Um, I would love to find one of the flexible nibs that they made a couple years ago and pop that on there, but. Uh, until then, I'll be very happy. At this point, I just kind of had some downtime. Um, I had a uh, nib grinding appointment with uh, CY, also known as Tokyo Station Pens, at 3 o'clock. So I was just kind of milling about the show, uh, looking for some ink, looking for some potential pens to buy with my newfound riches. Um, and I saw some cool stuff. I had my eyes on a couple of things. Uh, I got a bottle of ink that matched the... Uh, ink color uh, that matched the body color of my new Optima, uh, which of course you saw in the writing sample. Um, and then it came time for my nib appointment with CY. Um, I had a couple of things that I wanted him to grind. Um, and it was also just super cool to meet him. Uh, we had been in correspondence, you know, over Instagram for a couple of years, uh, you know, even back when I was working at Lamy and we'd like FaceTimed a couple of times. So it was super cool to meet him in person. Super, super nice guy, incredibly talented nibsmith and nib grinder, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, so his appointments were running a little behind, um, which I soon found out why. It's because he will grind a lot of your pens. Um, so I just kind of sat at his table and played with the insane stuff he had, which I will show you right now. This stun baton of a pen is the Shoseikan Aokoyama, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, myth, which is built off of a Namiki Emperor. Um, so it's colossal. It has the number 50 size nib, um, but everything else is custom. So it's, it's the same eyedropper fill system. Uh, it is a ebonite core body with a solid sterling silver overlay. Um, and yes, it does post, which I think is pretty hilarious, considering it's, you know, the size of a Costco jumbo hot dog. Mm -hmm. 
this insane thing is a, uh, or I believe it's an Arushi King of Pen um, sailor, but with a triple stacked, uh, like, King Eagle style nib, which is absolutely nuts. I think it would go through a converter in, like, you know, maybe three lines. Um, so very, very cool to play with that. Very cool to play with all of CY's stacked nibs, which are something he's known for. Uh, finally, it came time for my turn. So I uh, handed him over my Omos the Cinema, which is a limited edition Paragon from the 90s. Um, and it has kind of a boring, or it had kind of a boring medium nib on it, but I had him put a very good, very crisp uh, cursive italic on it, which I love to use. And that happened pretty quick. It's a pretty straightforward grind, especially for him. So I had him take a look at my Mont Blanc Bohème, which, as I mentioned in the review, I ground myself, and I didn't love the job that I did. So I had him just take a look at it, give me some advice on how to grind it, and he also just kind of tuned it up. That's writing excellently now, uh, and I've been using it a lot more as a result. Finally, as he was doing these two pens, I was just inking my Aurora at his table, and upon testing it, I found that it wrote truly really bad like i've heard that aurora pens have a good amount of feedback but this one not only had a lot of feedback but was also super dry which basically is like writing with like a like a hard pencil like not just not enjoyable at all so i passed it over to him he wrote with him he's like oh wow this is really bad <laughs> and then he tuned it up like in like 30 seconds and it now writes perfectly so so, I don't know if I've ever shown this pen on video, but it's my Omos uh, Paragon the Cinema in the Pearl Celluloid. Um, had a pretty boring medium nib on it. Uh, as you know, I don't like them. So, this is the uh, stub that uh, CY grounded to, which is beautiful and crisp. Omos the Cinema. Uh, CY stub. The first uh, nib grind I tried of CY's was a Schaefer Triumph Extra Fine Stub, which is quite an unusual nib, but it is really, really nice, and I had him model it after that. Just nice, crisp, but still pretty smooth. The cross strokes are like razor thin on this. And then the other one was uh, this Bohem, which I will sneak in between those two writing samples. Um, very fun pen with a not very fun medium nib on it once again so same treatment uh, I tried to grind it myself but I, I've been grinding my stubs wrong apparently I was obviously they were writing and not ruining the pen but um, just in terms of the shape um, so I had CY fix this up and kind of show me how he did it so I can do it better in the future um, and this is inked with uh, Mont Blanc Turqu or not Mont Blanc Waterman turquoise. This was a uh, Faber Castell stone gray. I'll definitely be using this pen a lot more because now it's fun. Not quite as crisp a line as the uh, Omos, but I think that's just a virtue to the actual like nib geometry of the Omos for some reason. There's just something about it, but this is nice too. I'm I'm pretty happy with it. After this, um, I, you know, paid for my nib grinds, still had a little money left over, and was super excited to get my last pen of the day, which ended up being a 1965 Pilot Capless. This thing is in incredible condition, and uh, there are some pretty cool things about it, both just the fact that it's this old, but also has some fun little things going on with the mechanism that I'm Super, super excited to show you guys. Last but certainly not least is this 1965 Pilot Capless. That was the last pen that I purchased at the show. Um, this pen is in incredible condition. It's an aluminum pen with some plastic pieces. Um, not a nick to be seen. The plating is in excellent shape. The mechanism works perfectly. Um, this is a twist to open, unlike a lot of other uh, Capless's and yeah, this is a second year Capless. The Capless was first introduced in 64. So very cool to have such an early part of pilot history. 
Um, it writes really well as well. But um, another cool thing about it is, so I got this at Dane Nix's table, and he told me that, um, so these pens are old to the point that they don't use the modern pilot cartridges and converters. They use uh, something kind of called a Con W, uh, which is very hard to find and very kind of finicky just because it's a, a sack fill like the Con 20. Um, and they're hard to find and very expensive once you find them. So you can either refill cartridges or apparently, according to him, um, you can bore out a sailor converter and fit it to it if you cut off the end. And that's what he had on this pen. Or I asked him very nicely to put one on this pen because he had them handy. And he did. So now I kind of have this dope thing where I have a very old pen using a modern cartridge converter system, which is kind of the best of both worlds for me, especially because even in my other vanishing point that I love so much, it's using a little pilot squeezy converter, which I really don't care for. And I hate the little rattly Con 40 that they make these days. This is really kind of a great option. And I've been, I've been using this a lot. I've been carrying it around a lot. Um, so you just kind of pop it in there. Yeah, nice smooth twist. It seals relatively well, about as well as my other capless, um, but it is very fun. So very comfortable to write with too, just because the clip placement and the overall shape of the pen doesn't really get in my way at all. And let's go for some writing. The pilot capless of 1965. It's a fine, medium nib, very smooth and enjoyable to write with. And I'm using Diamine Marine, which I also actually picked up in California at a Kinokuniya bookstore, which was pretty fun. I've been using this uh, out on the town probably a lot more than I should, um, just because it is so convenient, it writes so well, it writes every time, and I can refill it quite easily without worrying about the converter too much. So. This is definitely going to make it into my daily use rotation a lot more than I expected when I was eyeballing it for the first time. I thought this was going to be kind of like a precious pen. But no, it is very much a user pen, and I'm very happy to own it. One last little thing that I picked up at the show was actually a gift from my friend Mike, uh, whose table I was using to sell my pens. Uh, real Olive Boy pen heads will recognize this guy. This is the Aurora 88 Duo Cart. And so yeah, I, I checked this out in my uh, in my vintage versus modern. This is literally the exact pen. Um, but what is super cool about this particular one is that it comes with both the super cool green leather and brass case, but also this very cool case of original cartridges. So they slide out like this, and then you can pen apart. You have this, you know, the the duo card. Um, pop one out and then you can fish your cartridges out of this little thing and fill it up that way. So I think it's super cool, very fun design. Um, there isn't any ink in these cartridges anymore or there's like very little, you can still see a little blue in there, but just a super, super cool design. And having these is very cool knowing that I'll be able to just refill them and not worry about them wearing out over time as much so I can actually use this pen. Which if you remember from the video, is very cool. I like the design. I think it has really nice proportions um, and it has a really, really nice nib. Um, so yeah, thank you again to Mike for this very fun gift. After I picked up that pilot, I uh, was ready to go. So I said goodbye to all my friends, uh, picked up the pens of mine that didn't sell and headed out with a, a bag full of a bag full of pens. It was also at this point that I realized I didn't have any ink to ink these pens with so I ended up going to uh, Mido in in uh, San Jose later on um, and picking up some fun ink but you know that's another story this was definitely my most fun most successful pen show I've ever been to uh, I was absolutely buzzing before during and after and it was so cool to meet some people that I'd only ever met online um, I got recognized by one of my YouTube subscribers, so uh, you you know who you are. It was super nice to meet you, and uh, it's 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 wild to like get recognized even though you only have like fourteen hundred subscribers. Um, but you know, 
I won't let it go to my head yet. Yeah, once again, I'm I'm just like so I feel so lucky to be able to go to these pen shows and and have a fun time buying and selling and and playing with stuff and yeah, um that that is pretty much my my recap of the show. Um super super fun. Definitely going to try to go again in the future um if my travel schedule lines up with a uh, late August pen show again. But uh yeah. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to my channel once again. And I appreciate, you know, all the comments and likes and subscribes that you guys drop my way. Um, definitely very encouraging to keep the channel going, uh, even if I have an otherwise busy life. But yeah, uh, again, pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you here. And I will see you next time.